Okay, for anybody that's trying to understand magnetism, you have to understand what field incommensurability is and how the two fields within a magnet uh, express themselves. Now, first we have to, of course, define what a magnet is. Now, prior to a magnet being created uh, inside of a magnetizing coil, we have obviously no empirical difference in the quantification of the magnet prior to its being magnetized than after it has been created into a very powerful magnet. So what has changed? Obviously not one iota of the quantity of a magnet has changed. What has happened is the qualitative change in the magnet. Now that change is field coherency. Now if you don't understand this, you're never going to understand my book on magnetism. I mean, you may not want to, but if you're watching this video, I assume you do want to. You then have to ask yourself, well, what is the difference between a 5-watt light bulb that is absolutely worthless to read by and a 5-watt laser that will burn a hole right in your ass? And the answer is coherency. Okay, coherency of the expression of electromagnetic fields, or in this case, we have coherency of the expression of the reciprocating hyperboloid that has been made coherent through uh, a dielectric force capacitance increase and a causation of the qualitative change of the now created magnet such that there is field coherency. Now here we must imagine a, uh, a cylinder magnet. Now this could be equally a spherical magnet or a cube magnet, it doesn't make any difference. Let's separate out the two fields. Now here is the magnet right here. If we imagine a, a rectangular box around this. This is the hyperboloidal expression of the two fields that are always fighting each other. Now if a coherent field that exists either at the atomic scale or coherently at the macro scale and the magnet must always express itself out this way. Now the only thing that's missing in these, this diagram right here is geromagnetic precession, which we know is the Lamour frequency. A magnet is a reciprocating processional hyperboloid which extrapolates itself out in a hypertrochoidal fashion. It's, it is absolute simplex field dynamics that is ultimately and irreducibly no comp more complex than fluid dynamics. You know, even a, even a brain-dead plumber knows that water flows downhill and he bases his entire plumbing skills off the notion of fluid dynamics. Okay, plumber looks at your plumbing and goes, your pipes ain't running downhill, that's why your toilet ain't draining. Um, <laughs> while people think that my book or my explanation of magnetism, which is irrefutable by the way, is uh, complex, they say, well, you say stuff like reciprocating processional hyperboloid, and well, that's a word cell. It is really divinely simplex. I assure you that once you have the geometry of this processional nature of magnetism within your head, and uh, you visualize it, you will see that it is as simple as a, a silver pool of light. I mean, it is divinely simplex uh, beyond comprehension. It is not complex. Now, let's separate out the two field expressions within a magnet. Here we have the entire magnet in the metal, okay, expressing out field incommensurability. Now, field incommensurability inside the polarized magnet, i.e., the the neodymium iron boron lump, lump or the ferrite of the samarium cobalt has been turned into a magnet, or this also exists at the atomic scale within the hydrogen atom, expresses itself out as a hyperboloid, okay? If you don't know what a hyperboloid is, then look it up. Now let's just take a look at the magnetic field. Here we have a point of, uh, of a near infinite zero, um, close to zero magnetic field at the center of the magnet. All we've done is remove the walls of the magnet. We have increasing magnetic flux density, increasing at the point of centrifugal divergence out of either side or quote unquote pole of a magnet. Now let's look at the other field that is in excuse me, that exists inside the magnet, and that's the dielectric field. It is absolutely inverse to the magnetic. Okay, Wherever magnetism is present, there is decreasing dielectricity. Wherever there is increasing dielectricity, there is increasing magnetism. And you can see all this underneath ferro uh, the uh, ferro, uh, ferro film or magnetic viewing film, very simple. You can see the dielectric inertial plane of any magnet. We have increasing max dielectric inertial plane. While this shows large spatially, what it actually shows is maximum flux density of dielectric non-Euclidean uh, convergence. This would be uh, 
the counterspatial point of the erasure of a force in motion, i.e. maximum acceleration is zero acceleration. Same reason why the center of the Earth there is no gravity, or the center of the Sun there is no gravity. The point, the, the absolute epicenter of any field, uh, you will find that there is not that field. At the uh, point of uh, maximum, uh, uh, at the middle of any magnet, you will find that there is no magnetism. And obviously at the point of maximum space, you'll find no counter space. You'll actually find the creation of space. There is no such thing as a, a field terminating in space or space acting on things or doing things. Space is literally nothing other than the lack of inertia. Now space is created as the posterior attribute of a divergent field. As Tesla said, a field has never terminated in space. Space has never been a terminal, an output or an input for any field, be it gravity, electricity, magnetism, or dielectricity. Space is nothing other than the posterior privation of inertia, which is lost. So here we have the magnetic field, and here we have the dielectric field. Now let's take a look at what us pathetic little human critters uh, talk about uh, when we think of uh, magnetic uh, attraction and repulsion. Down here we have repulsion, quote unquote. Up here we have uh, magnetic attraction. Now, if you look at these on them side, on their side, and you actually tilt them upwards, you'll see the hyperboloid right here. This is the point of counterspatial erasure. This is uh, increasing inertia and acceleration and decreasing force and motion. What exists between these two is space, but space is not a thing. It is a privation of a thing, okay? And a privation is not a thing in itself. Someone can say, well, I'm cold when I sit in the shadow of a tree, therefore a shadow is something, because when I sit in the shadow, you know, there is no sun, therefore a shadow is something that acts on me. It makes me cold. But this is, a, this is one of the great stupidities of human understanding because humans aren't evolved enough yet intellectually to understand that a privation is not something in itself which can do things. Now we could say that ghosts exist and, you know, well, well let's just say dragons exist and we tell our children stories about dragons or whatever and uh, someone says, oh, a dragon's coming and someone could get afraid and have a heart attack and that someone could say, well, a dragon killed that person. But it doesn't exist. I mean, we're talking about something that is a privation, a figment, a concept that does something. Space is the very same thing. What we have here is the erasure of the lack of inertia between these two magnets, where we have opposite poles. Now, a magnet ultimately does not, does not have poles, but that's a point for another discussion. Well, a magnet doesn't have poles. It has the inverse of counter space. Inverse of counter space is obviously volume. Volume is measured in a collection of atoms which are expressing themselves coherently because they have field coherency or what we term as a magnet. We talk about aligned domains. Remember, a magnet is nothing other than speaking about the coherency of the atomic field structure within the magnetized magnet. So here we have increasing acceleration and decreasing force in motion, which is contrary to our, you know, our lowbrow human uh, collective understanding that if we accelerate, we're increasing motion. And as the case of fields, what we have in increasing acceleration, we have decreasing force in motion. Now what we have here below, uh, humans uh, you know, incorrectly understand is a magnetic repulsion. You take two light poles, you push them together, you feel this force. Well, in this case, it's the, the truth. You actually have increasing force. So the more you try to squeeze them together, the more force you, force you have. What you also have is increasing motion. You think, well, that doesn't make any sense. As I'm pushing these together, you know, they, they come together slower and slower and slower but what's happening is you have increasing motion and force occurring at the counterpoint between uh, the two magnets that are being pushed or forced together as they're being forced together that force is amplifying uh, exponentially between them so actually while there's nothing in between them and they are slowing down as you're pushing them together you do have uh, as per field theory increasing motion now this is increasing force and deceleration well, how can we have increasing motion and also deceleration? Well, it's, it's very simple. Up here we have the hyperboloid. Down here we have the sphere. You have an expanding sphere of force and motion as these are uh, tried to be pushed together or forced together by whatever means. Now here we have the hyperboloid. Here we have the sphere. I don't know how much you know about Euclidean geometry or non-Euclidean counterspatial geometry, but the inverse of a sphere is... Now this is a mathematical fact. This isn't my hypothesis. This is a hardcore fact. The inverse, the total 
opposite of a sphere is a hyperboloid. In other words, if you were to mathematically invert, which has been done, by the way, if you mathematically invert a sphere, what you end up with is a hyperboloid. Now, if you look at this on its side, I mean, excuse me, standing upright instead of on its side, you will see this. This is the hyperboloid right here. Here we have the magnetic field and a magnet. Here we have the dielectric field and a magnet. Here we have the sphere. Here we have the hyperboloid. Now the sphere is occurring at the uh, counterpoint of uh, decreasing magnetic force and motion. Here we have increasing acceleration and inertia. We have a null point where no magnetic force exists. And as I've told you before, there is no such thing as gravity as an autonomous force. Gravity and magnetism and electricity and dielectricity are all one and the same things. It is absolutely as absurd to speak of them as autonomous entities or principles of cosmic dynamics as it is to speak of water as one thing and steam as another and ice as another thing. It's ludicrous. They're all water. The same. Mother Nature is not an insane crack whore with a bag of magic particles and uh, quantum ghosts and all this other crap, okay, as one would uh, be believed if one were very stupid and delusional by uh, quantum mechanics and uh, Einsteinian physics. Because all of this is a brain fart that is doomed to oblivion. Even modern uh, quantum mechanics knows that uh, the ether must exist. However, the ether is as insane a word in quantum mechanics as it is to uh, yell out uh, Satan in the middle of a church recital. But what they've done is they've replaced it with another word, uh, and that word is uh, quantum fluid. So all the quantum mechanics has done is replace the evil word of the ether with something that's exactly the same thing, and they're starting to call it quantum fluid. Most people don't know that magnetism was never understood exactly how magnet work, and since everybody knows that fields are not particles and everything is a fields, how do we extrapolate out particle-free action at a distance, especially instantaneous action at a distance, such as gravitation, such as uh, and gravi uh, magnetic acceleration or deceleration, uh, gravitational acceleration? How do we explain that since fields are not particles? And of course, according to physics and quantum physics, everything is particles, but Mother Nature is not a crack whore, you know. It's, it, it, the cosmos doesn't work based upon Einstein and quantum mechanics. This is all an absurdity. They can never explain what a field is. There is no denotation of a field in any branch of particle physics or quantum mechanics because fields are not particles, but everything is fields. Now we have mathematical formulas out the wazoo for fluxian density and uh, you know effects upon a moving semiconductor and electromagnetic retardation and all sorts of formulas for calculating out the empirical effects upon other things. There is not one single explanation in the entire Earth that exists of what a field is, because humans are not evolved yet enough to know what a field is. Uh, but a field is extremely simple. A field is inertia. And space is nothing. Space is the absence of inertia. Um, extrapolating out what a field is and how they're all connected is extremely simple. Um, but uh, humans don't want simple explanations. They want to believe that uh, what uh, they're taught in school and what Einstein taught and quantum me uh, mechanics teaches is true, but it's all, it has no basis in reality. All of quantum mechanics is based upon the notion that magnetism is mediated out by these things called uh, virtual particles, virtual photons, excuse me. There's absolutely no empirical evidence for virtual photons. It's as absurd to say virtual photons as it is to say mystical uh, microscopic unicorns. To say, well, how does a magnet work? Oh, microscopic unicorns. <laughs> Someone would say, well, that's patently absurd, but the explanation from quantum mechanics and current physics is absolutely no different in its absurdity. Um, virtual particles both don't exist and they're absolutely a conceptual invention of quantum mechanics that has no basis in reality, they've never been seen, measured, experimented, never been the outputs of any result or the inputs of any testing, they don't exist. They have no basis in reality, yet all of quantum mechanics is based upon virtual particles. And they themselves admit that there's absolutely no basis for in, no basis whatsoever for the existence of this nonsense. So 
You know, you have to start questioning uh, humanity when it uh, starts putting uh, faith and credence in uh, these uh, pathetic little heretics. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.